You're listening to FFOP Radio. Reach the audience. Show. My name is Dave, and this is a fistful of podcasts from FFOPRadio.com. Back for another great week. Let me introduce you, as usual, to my co host, all the way from the Reno Sparks area. And up first, we have one Mr. Andrew Bergevin. David, I had a friend that became a vegan, and she completely changed. Uh, was it a meat cute? No, that's not it. It's. It's like I never knew herbivore. Oh, God. Uh, of course, in the studio, we got Chris over there on the couch. Bonjour, y'all! Oh, sound drops! I'm yeah. gonna try. I'm gonna try. Yeah, we're all working at new skills and maybe honing old ones. <clears throat> maybe. But, okay, so Andy, I this has occurred to me, uh, and I wanted to run it up your flagpole and kind of flesh it out. Okay. So, uh, watching all these true crime stuff that I do, I occasionally branch out into like old timey stuff. Old timey crime. Yeah. Old timey crimeys, I like to call them. <laughs> like, you know, like wrestling. Yeah. So, <laughs> so most of them take place over in England, but there was one that t- caught my interest because I want to. Put put two people essentially against each other. So let me talk about the m- murders first. They were called the Bloody Benders. The so Bloody Benders. Yeah. They were this quote unquote family that lived on some trail. Let's just say the Oregon Trail. I don't know. I didn't take Yeah, the Oregon notes. Trail in England. <laughs> no, it was here. Oh, okay. This is an American thing. So that's why it caught my eye. So it was these people, they were homesteaders. They built their cabin uh, and their farm next to a well-used trail. And when travelers would come through, they'd offer them, they'd say, you know, hey, can I stay here? Or they'd say, do you want to stay here? They'd feed them and murder them and rob them and, like, get rid of their body uh, amongst their animals because they owned a farm. Awesome. So there are conflicting reports. Like, four people live there. Sometimes they say three, they say there's like a parent couple and a younger couple, but the younger couple might also be brother and sister. Mm. Well, depending on where they lived. Yeah. yeah. So it, plus it's old timey. So moral of the story is they know for sure that they killed a whole shit ton of people because like, as it always does, at least back in the old days, here's how crimes were solved. You can get away with killing almost anybody going out west because you were expected to die, essentially. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. You're you're going out there. You can get killed by mountain lions or badgers or just the weather, like snow, heat, exposure. You, you were expected, essentially, to die, so whatever. But when a well-respected rich dude's friend or brother that disappeared, he launched an investigation himself and they were essentially found out because they tried to murder him. And he's like, I don't think so. <laughs> Wait. He, so he showed up. He was like, I'm here to investigate you for murder. And they said, we have to murder you to stop this. No, he, he went, uh, he basically just did the same thing that his brother did and they invited him in, but his guard was up. Cause he was like, I'm on the lookout for something that happened to my brother. And when in the middle of the night they tried to come in and kill him like they did all the other ones, he was like, I don't think so. I think he had a gun. Because it, <laughs> it was <clears throat> like the 1860s, so guns were available but not widespread, so it was super easy to kill someone in their sleep with a pickaxe or a mm-hmm. knife or whatever. Well, yeah, so that's he, the best way to do it. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, like, like you're mining somebody's death out of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and part of it is like when you're – you know, you're going to have the perfect victim because they're becoming across an, a virgin land, essentially. So they're going to be gassed, low on supplies, exposure, low on water. So you like you give them a nice meal, you get them nice and comfortable. So even if they do wake up while you're killing them, they're going to be like, what? Like, they're not going to be on edge at all. They're going to be like, oh, no. Well, at least I got to have dinner. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, so so here it is. Here's my my hypothetical and it must have happened because this story essentially proves that it can. My thing is 
there are, you know, back in the day, and and plus there are families that still like do murderous things. So families that do a murder. My yeah, my thing is, do you think there was ever like a murder family like the Bloody Benders who are essentially like capturing and stealing from tourists, who then, like, because there are dudes who will travel and murder. Well, yeah. So, so what I, it had to have happened where like a murder family took in a guest who was a traveling murderer. <laughs> and then they got murdered. And then who who wins in that scenario? Because no. if you're, you know, you think of it this way. You're the murder family. It's your cabin and you're really good at murdering people by now. And you got the home team and home field advantage. But it's people that you're murdering that are yeah. aren't looking to murder. Right. So you you kind of are lulled into a <laughs> so, uh, a, a a sense of security. Yeah, and, and I, I'm gonna say it, it really depends on who gets to jump on who. Right. So that's the thing is like I think that the the traveling murderer has the advantage because he's going into a new situation every time. So is wildly adaptable. Maybe he brought his own thing. Maybe he uses a weapon of opportunity. But again, when you have a murder family, you've got numbers on your side. And when you've got four people out to murder you. <laughs> it's a lot of people. Know, yeah. yeah. Or, or let's say it's just two or three people involved. I don't care. Whatever. They've got. But still, I think the scrappiness of the traveling murderer can outdo the family of murderers. But I feel like if, unless he, the the traveling murderer murders all of them at once, like if he just gets one of them, then the other ones will just figure out how to just. It depends on the type of murderer too. So <laughs> it, it's it's the old timey days. They've got a little house. They probably have an outhouse. He could just follow them out one by one. Like, oh, that guy has to go to the shitter. Like I left something outside in my horse. I'll be right back. <laughs> right, like you, you, if you're if you're crafty, that's the thing. It would be this would be an interesting movie. Yeah. To like, if someone could write a script like based on a family that murdered people, you know, on a trail, and bring in a character based on a type of dude roaming the you know Pacific Northwest murdering prostitutes, <laughs> and put them in the same room together and be like, all right, man, I I can't even imagine. But it has to have happened is what I'm getting at because like, the yeah. dude's brother, like he wasn't even a murderer. He was just on edge, woke up and was like, oh no, you're about to murder me. Like oh, if, you're, no. if you're thinking a step ahead, you're not waiting for them to make the first move. When you say murder family, the, the, <laughs> the stupid episode of, oh my God, Mulder and Scully X-Files, the one where they're like in the middle of the nowhere. Peacocks. Yeah. That's the family that I think of. As a murder family, I know yeah. that wouldn't be them. The cannibal ones with the fat mom and that weird mom, yeah, yeah, with the, with the end. But their they were their thing was inbred. They didn't actually kill anybody unless someone wandered onto their make... property. Right. Yeah. They they were provoked after they. I don't know why they buried their mutant baby on the baseball diamond. You'd think like whatever like this is your thing you are an inbred family and i'm sure getting rid of babies constantly who come out to be mutants or die or whatever well, yeah. you're, you're, all the tree trunks are already stuffed full near them so they had to find a new place yeah but like no one not one of those idiots was like oh wait this is a baseball diamond we shouldn't literally bury it on the pitcher's mound <laughs> what i don't know what baseball is david it's right out the window they can see it from their front porch all they know is motherfucking and burying babies on the baseball they would also even if you don't know what baseball is you would know that that place is often crowded with children hitting something round with something long sweet delicious children yeah they wanted the baby to be with the other kids yeah but no that's ridiculous Anyway, think about it and get back to me. I think everyone, that's, a, that's an interesting thought experiment. Mm -hmm. Murder family versus on the road murder. My money's still on the on the road murderer. I like, I, like the tra I like the idea of the traveling murderer, but he's almost like a traveling salesman. He's got like his briefcase he opens up and he's like, and this is how I stab you with this thing. Right, because that's the thing. If you're coming prepared, like if you're, but you would say, you know, because you're each of them is going to be looking for an angle. But if you're just being like, hey, man, we're fine. Here's a nice meal. And that person that you're feeding is like, I'm going to stay awake and kill them. 
<laughs> it, it'd be pretty awkward if he's sitting there sharpening his knife in his bedroom and the, the door comes open and the guy's holding a pickaxe. Yeah, well, because it's one thing to like, because you'd have to, if you're the murder family, you'd have to wait until you're sure everybody's asleep. But if you're that murderer, you have to do the same thing. So it's a stalemate. Yeah. Until, you know what? I what happens? I something's got to give, Andy. I want to see what happens in this scenario. In this movie that we're having somebody else write for us. Yeah, <laughs> I I want to get you know maybe in the future when there's a holodeck. That's what I'll do. I'll get. Uh, I'll I'll have data program a murder family versus a traveling <laughs> murderer. And run a thousand simulations. Oh no, the the holodeck broke, and now the murder family is free. Yeah, we'll have to. I'll have to definitely schedule it for a day where there's no electric electrical anomalies. That there's ha- no how, weird... how often did that happen in Star Trek? It seems it seems like they reference it a lot in uh, pop culture. Uh, well, it's it, the anomaly wasn't always electrical. That's the thing. Sometimes it was like a space amoeba, or sometimes it was a time space thing, or sometimes it was like an antimatter thing, or sometimes. But the moral of the story is. You'll never know. That's that's the problem. That's the problem with Star Trek is when you go in and I say, Data, get me that murder family versus traveling murder scenario and throw it in a cabin in Oregon somewhere. He's going to be like, you got it. And I'll say, Data, before you do, scan for any anomalies. But that's the thing. They always slip by the scan. So you'll never know. You just have to take your chances. He he spilled his space soda on the panel. Yeah, he space Fanta fell over <laughs> and got Fanta? it all. Oh, yeah. this 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 ship sucks. I don't know why Data is trying space Fanta. <laughs> <laughs> also, very clumsy Data apparently. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe uh, uh, is it Spike his cat? Sure. Yeah, Spike must have yeah. been around. That's the only reason he would have dropped his space Fanta. He's an android, uh, Andy. He's not going to drop a space Fanta. Help! My son is a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so also, I, I brought this up a little bit on social media, but I think I'm going to double down on it. That's the David Way. My money, mm-hmm. I, I, it's, it's the, I've got to be tried and true to myself, but my money for Nostalgia Ninja Turtles now is the Hyperstone Heist. That's what you were saying when we were playing Ninja Turtles 3. Yeah, I, I've after more research, I'm doubling down. Doubling I think and tripling it, down. Yeah, doubling and tripling. I think it is more fun mechanically than, um, what's it called? Turtles in Time. Turtles in Time. I I, I think that. the gimmick, uh, of of the time travel is interesting. However, the unskippable cutscenes are annoying. With Hyperstone Heist, they they don't even like blow smoke up your ass. I don't know if it was a cartridge size limitation, but I appreciate it. We're just jumping randomly from. A surfboard to a ship to, you know, you start out on the in the sewer and then you go up. Like, it's, there's no bullshit. There's just no bullshit. No. It's just like, hey, you're in New York. Go to the end of the level. Then it's like, we're going to a ship. Go to the end of the ship. Fine, I'll do it. <laughs> I don't need the, to waste the time every time in this, like, falling into the time thing. Falling out of the time thing. Like, seeing the Big Apple, 3 a.m. I don't need all that. But, David, that's that's what gives it the... The good stuff. I know, but I, when I want to indulge, I do Turtles in Time because it's still, uh, it, it's it's icing on icing, but sometimes you want to scrape that shit off and just play the game. I also appreciate the dedicated run button of the Hyperstone Heist. It is it is a good button. Does it have that <laughs> good, good Genesis music? Uh, that kind of yeah. sounds like farts? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't get away from the Genesis music. <laughs> It's like overdriven farts on a guitar. Yeah. Some good guitar farts. <laughs> yeah, I that's one of my one of my things though. I think, you know, Nintendo got a lot of stuff right. I think Genesis got a lot of stuff right. And in this one, it's 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 third party though. So Konami just had to make it leaner to fit on the cartridge. And it worked. And it's just the best, says David. I mean, Oh look, my copy of Hyperstone Heist just arrived here. I'll have to try it out later. Thank you, Internet. Which I ordered from legally. <laughs> yeah. I'm holding a cartridge in my hand. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm saying tr- try it out. If you're if you're not a believer, try it. Uh, you know, because the facts will speak for themselves. Of course, yeah. You, you know, like, but all the Ninja Turtles games kind of run on together eventually. David, walk to the right, punch a guy. Right, but that's that's why when you have such a wide and deep pool to choose from. 
it comes down to the finer points because all of them are walking right and punching. But some of them have a nice je ne sais quoi. And here's the thing. I'm going to start to pick apart now that I'm playing them more and more. I've got to start picking apart the technique the turtles use. And for me, I think the most practical turtle in terms of like transferable skills is Raph. Well, yeah. And he also has the... I mean, there's there's two of them have bludgeoning weapons and Leo has swords. But I mean, Raph can just poke holes in you. Well, not only that, I'm talking about when when you're going through it, like doing the button mashing. If you are watching your turtle go through its its move set, Michelangelo is ridiculously slow. Like he's got one of the fastest weapons, but he's one of the slowest turtles. Ridiculous. That's because he's high, David. Where does he get all his weed? Like Splinter's not gonna like he, he has. A, he's yeah, they grow it down in the snow. sewers. Yeah, there's no way you Sir need weed. you need tons of light for weed. Like, well, why do you think every time they do a bust on a grow house in every documentary or every time it's on the news, there's a billion lights of they above got them. grow lights? Yeah, let, let, let's say that it's there in Ninja Turtles two, an entire subway car, just a hydroponics farm for Michelangelo's weed. No, mm-hmm. Splinter would not let that shit fly. No, Splinter he has would... fucking glaucoma and arthritis. He needs the weed most of all. Yeah, he's cool with it. Uh, and they got it from Casey Jones. No. No, 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 no. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not going to live in a world where Splinter like is a toke master. That's not not <laughs> not what happened. Like Michelangelo was in a drug PSA. The turtles don't. If if you want to say he goes out, like he gets on his skateboard, he does some sweet shit, and while he's waiting for his pizza, like he all he meets a dude in the alley and picks up a dime bag. I'll believe that because he's far enough away. Splinter's not going to pick up on it. I buy. Mikey is a pothead, but they're not growing it. It's just you're walking by a grate, and some boys just come from. Hey, you got weed? <laughs> well, no, he'd have to get the. He would have to get the whole like trench coat and, and fedora thing. He would have to get up out of the thing, out of the the grate, and and go into an alley and be like, "Hey, dude, what's up? I need some sweet weed, and don't look too closely. That my fingers are only three in number. Yeah, and, and also don't green. look at my face whatsoever. Right? Yeah, Raph, he can go to fucking see critters too. No one bats an eye, but again, it's New York and no one looks at anybody. No one looks at anybody. So I believe it. I, I guess I that's that. That's the thing that's so believable about New York is like when you here's, here's a real life fact about New York is like when you watch kiss of the vampire with Nicolas Cage, I always do <laughs> when you do it on the, you know, several times a week, like I do. Uh, when he does that freak out saying, I'm a vampire, I'm a vampire, like, and it's covered in blood on his face and his suits all fucked up. Like the people walking around and near him in that shot are not extras. Those are regs. Oops. Those are regs ass New Yorkers just reacting to Nicolas Cage acting <laughs> as a crazy person on a New York street. Yeah. Just so don't look at him. Every day. He's screaming that yeah. he's a vampire. He's probably going to take my blood. Yeah. So that's why I believe now that in New York, if Raph wants to throw on a trench coat and a hat and that's it, and he wants to go see a movie, I will 100% buy. He can do it completely un... Um, molested. I want to say... Yeah, I want to say unmolested, but that's not... I, but yeah, basically unmolested. Like, no one will give him any... Like, even the guy like giving him the ticket, tearing his ticket, the concession stand <laughs> people, I guarantee they will give zero shits because they're like... I'm ready to grind this day out and get home. This so, is New York City, bitch. David, the turtles have money, yeah? Where the fuck did I they get it? I don't know if they have money beyond, like, maybe what they find. I imagine Are they the robbing people? Is a, How do they get the pizza? No, well, they get the pizza because they have a payphone down in the sewer. Here's the thing. Yeah, but how do they pay for it? I'm about to, when I said here's the thing, that was the thing I was about to say there, here is the thing about they get their money this way. They have access to not only storm drains, but the sewer. And can you imagine how much change you drop that ends up in the sewer and or a storm drain? How many dollar bills you drop that fly off? Now, uh, now keep in mind, this is New York City, so there's a ton of foot traffic. So imagine all of that dropping, falling into the sewer. And who else is going to collect it when you've got four turtles living down there full time? They're always looking for shit. I imagine what else are you going to do? I mean, I guess, like, train train to be a ninja, skateboard, and search for dirty poo-poo money. Yeah, I mean, what else? <laughs> that you give I, to would, the pizza guy. You would it would be, you'd find most of the money in the storm rain, so it's not going to be dirty poo-poo money. It's going to be just, like, dirty street money. 
Because no one's flushing money unless a child gets a hold of it, which is a rare occasion. It's mostly going to be like storm drain shit. So, I, you know, whatever. Mikey's got his skateboard. When he's rolling around, I guarantee he's seeing a fiver there, a tenner here. There's quarters here or there. There's no way that they need to steal to get along. In a city like New York, people are dropping money left, right, and center. And keep in mind, this is before debit cards. It's true. So it's only cash, and people are dropping it or possibly getting mugged and their purse breaks and it fl- all the coins fly into the air. Oh. And oh no, jingle jangle. You know, not for nothing. If, if you're the, one of the turtles and you get there and there's a struggle in the foot clan and the purse rips in half and the coins and the money go everywhere. And the lady takes off after you deal with the foot clan. I think that money is totally legit for you to pick up. And, and I also think like the, you know the Foot Clan doesn't carry wallets because it would make their spandex look weird, but they probably have like a twenty stuffed in a sock, right? You knock that guy out, you take off his yeah. little booty. I I think any any prepared ninja should have something on them. Not nothing that I can identify them, obviously, so they're not going to carry a wallet. But yeah, they'll probably pop a twenty or something into their their headband or whatever. <laughs> but I I wouldn't even worry about them. Like I don't want to like again. This is before DNA or whatever. But I yep, I don't want to leave a bunch exist. of evidence. And, and this isn't, I'm not playing my life as an RPG. I don't need to pat everybody and look for like, oh, this one had an aspirin on him. Like, I'll, I'll, I can sell it at the pawn shop. Like, the purse explodes and there's some money. I'll grab that. I'll put the credit cards in the ID like for when the cops, then they show up. But the money, that's all up for grabs. And I think the turtles would not be amiss if they, you know, helped themselves to some scattered dollar bills. Yeah, they're like, hey, I can, I can, I can afford a Supreme pizza tonight. Yeah, and with what... Thank you, lady. And we also know they're good with money because... But need I remind you of the... the Maybe the most iconic scene ever. I, we've alluded to it a zillion times already. But when Mikey's there waiting for the pizza and Donnie shows up, you know, he's on time. Saves that three bucks. Yeah. And it's kind of, kind so, of yeah. a shitty thing to do to the pizza guy. But the pizza guy should be used to it by now. I don't think that's shitty. I think that's fair. I guess. He was three minutes late. Three minutes late because those people live in the sewers. And also, your pizza's going to be all fucked up because I had to turn it sideways to fit it down the grate. No, I think we've covered this. Somebody, I've talked about this to somebody before, but it bears repeating because everybody should know this. That dude showed up and did not realize the address had and an eighth, quote unquote, at the end until he got there. He was already late, so I'm not going to be fed a line of bullshit where it's like, well, it was 122 and an eighth. The eighth, he didn't even realize until he got there. That's, that's, that's true. He did not read his uh, his delivery slip. Yeah, so when Mikey says, wise men say forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza, that is fucking legitimate. <laughs> it's the way of the warrior. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but what's up with you, Andy? Have, uh, what's uh, Anything new happening? Oh, let's see. Did you know that if you push the volume buttons on your iPhone in a specific way, it calls the police? No. What? So... Like, I'm, I'm in my car, phone's in my pocket, and I must have, like, twisted wrong or something, because the volume on my phone goes down, my music stops. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Uh-huh. So I just start, I, I, I find the volume button with my finger through my pocket, and I just start jamming on it. Okay. And my phone goes, whoop, 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 like, what the fuck is going on? And I open it up, it goes, it's, 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 and it's already dialed 911, and I'm just like, no, stop, and I hit, hang up. What the hell? Then it tries to dial my wife, it's like, dialing your emergency contact. I was like, no. <laughs> then, the, then the police called me back. Oh my what? god! And they're so, like, "Are you in trouble, sir?" Like, no, the phone it made bad. <laughs> I I actually like cheap toilet paper in a public restroom. I'm completely torn because I like the idea of that that it'll call nine one one and your emergency contact if you can't make there, whatever. Like it'll try, try on your behalf. That's a great self defense thing. The the annoying thing is that you accidentally found it. Like that should be on a card yeah. first thing when you open that motherfucker up. And also you should have to be shown how to do it before you get like past any <laughs> setup process. I was mortified. Yeah. yeah. Obviously like like because that's a great thing to have, but it's a terrible thing to not know you have. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I wonder if my phone does some shit like that. I don't know. Well, just hit yeah. your just hit your volume up button a lot. Apparently, that calls the police. I wonder if it's like 
all down a bunch and up a bunch. Like if you freak out and you just like your thumb starts rocking the volume button a shit ton, like they're like, oh my god, he's freaking. Like you're really trying he's to just open up. up your phone. Yeah, like maybe once you get. I obviously you'll have to look it up and, and tell me later because now I'm curious, but maybe if you get to like max volume and then hit it four or five more times, like to who knows? I mean, that's probably it, but I mean, come on, come on, iPhone work with me. Uh, yeah. Like that, that should be like something that they make sure that you fucking 100% know you have not only because of the hilarious situation that you were put in. And the lady, um, the lady seemed understanding. I was just like, I'm so sorry. Don't yeah. arrest me. I'm sure that happens a shit ton. Like I'm sure the most delightful part of nine one one operators jobs are like butt dials, technology mishaps, and like toddlers who learned it for the first time from a, either a show or preschool. Well, but it's, it's also, also like the, the phones that don't have a, like an actual line hooked up to them can still dial out for emergencies. So people give their, yeah. their kids the phones like, here you go, kid. Oh Yeah. <laughs> that's not gonna happen here <laughs> so for your iphone apparently when you were having it in your pocket it was holding on the like the side button like the on off button uh. and then um it was pressing either of the volume buttons and then there's like a slide so like, while it's in your pocket it's an emergency well it's an emergency sos you press and hold the side button, one of the volume buttons, until the emergency SOS slider appears. So you were probably pressing both oh, buttons, and yeah. you were moving your body. That and seems sliding. so unlikely. Yeah. yeah. You it, can turn yeah. it off, though. That's well, it, I mean, it seems unlikely, but we have empirical evidence <laughs> that it did happen. <laughs> like, I mean, it did happen, yes. Your your fingers hit those two buttons, and your chicken thigh swiped that thing, <laughs> and you were drawn into a web of, of deceit. emergency. Yep. Of deceit. Yeah, but I'm part of organized crime. Now you're going to get a ticket for wasting of emergency services. And you're right to get charged. <laughs> no. I'm going to jail. I want it to be a $475 fine plus court fees. Of course. I don't know, David. All I do is, all I do is fucking homework now. And I, I hate... Boring. I hate online anything now. I used to love online classes because I didn't really? have to fucking talk to anybody and there were no group projects. And now they're like, hey, we have video calls now. So you have to do group projects again. Oh yeah. Ugh. I I don't know, man. I I get I get that uh Zoom and everything needs to happen, but it's so annoying cuz nobody knows technology. But I'm also I'm I'm of two minds cuz I want to jump back into reality and start experiencing real life again, but I'm also very worried because I don't know the shape of things and people are also weird and people are also still wearing masks and that hasn't been lifted. Yeah. I'm still just sort of hunkered down. I mean, I'm I'm fully vaccinated. <laughs> And I still wear my mask because I don't want to be buddy like pointing at me like it's the uh the end of uh shit pod people. Yeah, or like uh, children of the corn. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's lifted now and everybody's like uh I It's not here. Uh, it is here. Well, that's that's, that's, that's Arizona. Thing. And a bunch of other states did too, but yeah. So it's whatever. I moral of the story is uh, I'm I'm of, I don't want to talk about the virus and all the mass shit exclusively. I, what I want to the moral of that and the issue that I'm having is like when I return to like society at large, am I going to have enough tolerance left for other humans to be a productive member, or will I just have to be a hermit and accept a life <laughs> behind closed doors? I, I, I see the life behind closed doors didn't like when we started. I was like, well, I'm practically inside all the time anyway. Turns out I wasn't. Turns out I like to go places. Yeah. I, you know, we've been going to the park because like the house is big enough. I can swing a couple sticks around and exercise if I need to. But just the act of like going to a park and having fresh air and like sunshine on you. I swear. Leaving it. It's, it's come, you know, everybody takes it for granted and everybody's like, oh, you know, you know, did that same joke where it's like, I already stay home. So blah, 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 you know, whatever. Everybody needs to get out and get under that sun and get some vitamin D in them and move their asses because it like it'll break up all that weird shit in your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and David, I, I know some people that because they were shut in this whole time, only talking to the people that they lived with, essentially. Have become bitchier. Oh, not only that, but when you become insulated like that, you become weirder. Like bitchier is one thing, but weird is another because <laughs> when you get out into real life again uh, and interacting with people, your bitchiness will tone down because you'll see other people and be like, oh, okay, 
<laughs> but your weirdness you'll wear on your sleeve. So, oh, I, I I did it, Dave. I bought a tent, so so I'm going camping. Okay. Oh boy. But now, uh, beyond beyond a tent, like, did you, are we doing the full accoutrement? Like, we got sleeping bags. Now, let me ask you this, because uh, you seem like the kind of guy who could go either way. So I want your opinion. Yeah. Now that you're you're going camping, obviously with the sleeping bags, are you going to pull a cot situation or just like a mattress on the ground? Or are you going full experience like pine needles under the tent? I, I think we're I think we're doing pads under the under the sleeping sleeping bags. I, I do pads. not want to sleep on the dirt. Okay. I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, last the last time I was camping, I roughed it. I did it on a particularly thick patch of pine needles, but it was on bare pine needles. And uh, my sleeping bag, not not a terrible experience, but uh, cold. <laughs> but it, it, like the th- the thing about camping, David, is, is I haven't done it in so long, and everybody always set up like I was a kid. Everybody always mm. set up everything for me. <laughs> uh, you, uh, th- here's the here's the thing about camping is like out of necessity, everything will get set up because you'll get the tent up. You're like, whoo, now I can rest. Who was once lunch? And you're like, oh, fuck, I have to set up the grill over the fire pit. And then you'll get that set up and you'll have lunch. And you say, oh, now I got to take a shit. And if you have one of those portable toilets, you'll fix that up. Or you'll find your toilet paper and shit in the woods. You, 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 yeah, you put it up over the fire pit. Yeah, you shit <laughs> over the fire. <laughs> but I t- Turn the fire off first or put it out. Right yeah, turn it off. <laughs> turn the knob. Yeah, just turn the, turn the knob on the fire. Did you know pooping standing up is chic? <laughs> Yeah, uh, but it's one of those things where it, it's also a great excuse to buy all the weirdo shit that you would never like grant yourself privilege. Oh, see, to, I have like a hatchet, knives. Yeah, hatchet. I'm gonna get a good cooler that's bear proof. Yeah, like uh, it, it's it's a great time to to really flex that weirdo muscle of yours. <laughs> I, by yours, I mean everybody's. Yeah. I do the same shit. Well, it's well, like you get into a new hobby, and all of a sudden you're like, "Hey, I finally have an excuse to buy a survival knife." Or yeah. And you, you would say, oh, I would never, ever buy a hatchet. But now that I'm going into the woods, what if, there, you know, wood, axe, number one, but two, bear, an axe, g- good idea. Yeah, throw the axe at the bear, leaving yourself defenseless for when the vampires come. Yeah, you, you want to, because everybody who goes camping, imagine themselves in flannel, cargo shorts. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh, like. Timberland boots and you've got an ax on your belt and you're wearing a nice big backpack that's like evenly balanced and not too heavy, but it's also like has an aluminum frame and you got your uh, camelback water and shit. When in reality, you set your shit up and you hang around the campfire the and whole drink time. Beer. Yeah. Oh, that's that's exactly what I'm planning on doing. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go- I'm going to set everything up. I'm going to <laughs> set up a little camp stove. I'm going to get <laughs> some of that nice legal California weeds. And I'm gonna sit by a fire. You you've got to go on a couple of you got to go on a couple of hikes though. You got to get away from the campsite and break away and and like leave your phones and shit behind. Oh the the um, I, I I almost it's it's almost a necessity to leave your phone behind because it's not gonna work where I'm going. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. I keep your eyes peeled. Like situational awareness does not end in the city. Uh, there are a fair amount of true crime cases where there's weirdos in the woods. I'm not saying it's yeah, those traveling murderers. I'm not saying it'll happen, but like out of the hundreds I've seen, there's like three, but I'm still going to tell you, keep your eyes open. If you see or hear anything weird, go investigate. Don't be like, it's just a chipmunk. Don't be like, it's just a deer. It's just a chipmunk that like, sounds like a cocking shotgun. It's just yeah, a traveling like, murderer. I'm, well, obviously if you hear something particularly shady then be on high alert but you know there's obviously going to be weird forest noises and shit but even beyond like the weird forest murder there could be like a weird predator if you see a coyote and they are wigging out keep a stick nearby and shit of course but david after my initial investment i only have to pay like 70 dollars every few weekends to do this what why because well the, the initial investment's like the biggest part sleeping bags tents those cost money but then like you go to a nice campground. Oh, so so you're going to a place that's going to charge you to stay there. Yeah, I mean, I want to go to a camp. A camp I'm, I'm not just going to wander out into the woods and be like, this looks good. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe we're spoiled for choice here. I Because I, in Arizona, at least, and maybe it's only the locale that I'm in, there is a ton of campgrounds that and, and public land that you can go on and camp for nothing. Oh. Yeah, that that doesn't uh, exist here. I mean, I suppose I could walk out into the desert and just set up a tent. 
Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing it down here in the desert. But up north, like where all the trees and the cold air is, that like you can go out and and just like sort of wander off onto public land as long as you're not wandering onto some other dude's or it's shit. hunting season. Yeah, I mean, I definitely wouldn't go out camping in in, in man hunting season. The purge. Yes. Yeah, like if it's a if it's a bloodlust style situation. But there are people who go out there and wear vests and shit. To, you know, bulletproof vests. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, like, your, your yellow crossing guard vest. I don't get, why is it that, you know, when you wear the reflective vest, I assume the animals could see it too, but are we just going off the principle that they're colorblind? I don't know. And also, Probably. animals is dumb. Sure. And maybe, yeah, I guess if you're stupid and the first, this is the first time you've seen, like, the color neon orange, you might just wander over and <laughs> taste a gun barrel. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, have, haven't you ever had to hit your brakes really hard to avoid hitting a deer because the fucker, the fuckers on the road sees you and goes, oh, no, and stops? Oh, yeah, yeah. But up here, it's not so much deer, it's elk. Up north, uh, uh, in Payson... Uh, the craziest thing I've ever seen. I thought it might be my first ghost story, but it turned out to be something legitimate. But I'm driving up to Payson and it's like foggy and it's the, you know, the season for the reason. And so there's a lot of animals in the area and my headlights are on like full high beam. And I see like all these weird white shapes just sort of milling around far in the distance. Like, the KKK. The fu- and then, Top by yeah, top by all the little dots of their eyes that are now catching the headlights. I'm like, what? I was like, oh my god, it's a congregation of forest ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> but I got close, and it was just a shit ton of these enormous elk, and you know they're standing whatever twelve feet high, and you know I'm in an SUV. Not a single one of them gave a single shit. Nope. And so I I had to sit there blowing my horn. Because what are you going to do? I'm going to roll up on these things, and they've got antlers and 700 pounds apiece. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, I, I do feel safe in the car. But Pull out to your a gun. Certain, to a certain degree. Just, yeah, I was p- packing back in the day, just firing out of the window. Yeah, just wave it around. <laughs> yeah, so what I did in reality, that's what I would have done if I were a pussy. What I did in reality was I swerved into the other lane and then p- re- real tight right turn. Then I pulled my gun out of my holster <laughs> Uh, and as the the vehicle started doing rolls, because it turned and started rolling, obviously, every time the window would uh, come parallel to the elk, I would fire. So it was like, roll, 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 fire, roll, roll, fire. Every shot, a kill shot. Until uh, I was out of bullets and my car stopped rolling, landing on its wheels perfectly, of course. And uh, there's just a shit ton of dead elk that had now been mashed under my rolling car. And I just drove away. Yep, that's what he did. <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> That's how I lost the car, but gained 12 yeah. trophy bucks. It was $47,000 in body damage, but I had elf, 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 <laughs> elf insurance. I had elf insurance. No, I had elk jerky for 17 years. Yeah. 17. That's a lot of jerky for a long time. Yeah. Well, cause I, you know, every time I would roll, I'd take one down. And on top of that, the collateral damage of the rolling car took down all the elk. I didn't shoot. Mm hmm. So it took them down and tenderized them with the weight and ferocity of a Ford Explorer. <laughs> the weight and ferocity. Yeah, it was. They were built for delicious. That's what I said when I ate. <laughs> yeah, them. I, not not only were they tenderized by the rolling car, but you dried out the meat with your exhaust. Yeah. Also, not a lot of people know this about me, but on my right hip, where I keep my six shooter that I kept twelve bullets in on this one occasion. <laughs> on my left, I keep an assortment. Uh, well, not as not a huge assortment, obviously. Three v- rather large shakers of uh, seasonings: one for pork, one for beef, and one wild card that's for anything, including vegetables. Ooh, is it salt? <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the special ingredient. So as I was rolling, I was also salting. Uh, yeah, I. It was a very impressive thing that I alone was there to witness because it was just me. Yeah, it's too bad your dash cam didn't work. This is long before dash cams. Oh. This is before Facebook. This is before MySpace. <laughs> just Dave out there. Yeah, just Dave and the hunting, elk. Hunting down traveling murderers, and those elk had already killed too much. That's why I was out there. I was looking for murderers and thought, now it's time to take back some nature? David heard about some suspicious forest noises and went to investigate. Here, do you want to hear a crazy story? That is incredibly relevant to what we're talking about. Sure. 
<laughs> when I was a young man back in the day, I had a girlfriend and we I would take her on rides in the car, my first car, in fact. And I would, you know, at night I would drive eastward toward Globe. And here, between here and Globe is a long stretch of nothing and no street lights. It's just desert. So at night, very dark. So I would turn on the high beams. And so the first time we went out there, she starts wigging out. I'm like, what is your deal? She's like, ah, oh, uh, what if there's like murderers out here, or rapists? What if there's, what if people are just waiting out here for us and they're going to kill us? I said, well, let's stop and think about that for just a minute. <laughs> let's unpack this, shall we? Shall we? <laughs> so your hypothesis is that people are waiting alongside a highway for cars traveling at 65, but anywhere between 65 and 80. But let's not limit ourselves. There are people up there who like to tear around those corners. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that your hypothesis is that these people who want to commit violent crimes against these unsuspecting people in their motor cars come out to the middle of nowhere to hide behind some sort of cover, either a creosote bush or an ironwood tree. Yeah, one of them big old cactuses that kill people because they fall yeah, over. Yeah, those big old, yeah. So, and, and so you're thinking that they're just going to jump out. Our headlights will illuminate them for a moment. And in that moment, they're going to somehow convince me to pull over and give them up to you <laughs> or give you up to them. I should say. Yeah. I, I said, there's very little chance of that. I said, if I were a murderer, I would go someplace where people are not extremely fast death machines. Mm -hmm. But then David saw the sign that said, sell us your girlfriend 50 bucks. Yeah, it was a dude holding it, and I was going slow enough that I was able to read it slow and aloud. He, and he was holding even, a hatchet. That freaked her out. And then when I tapped the brakes, she pissed herself, and I had to get the upholstery cleaned. <laughs> That's why I trashed the car by doing that roll, because the upholstery was ruined. Even after that critical thought experiment that I walked her through in the moment, she still would not concede to me that it, it would be illogical for a rapist or murderer. To hang out in the middle of the desert at night. Wouldn't believe me. I mean, the murderer might be out there because they're hiding a body. Right. And that, that's what I said, too. That Because that did, I, you know, I said, I conceded the point that people who like to commit crimes go out to the desert. But it is after the crime has been committed and they are hiding the evidence. The desert is a great place to hide evidence because nobody goes out there because it's hot. There's a bunch of animals and there's a bunch of scavengers that will spread the shit out. So they're going to be busy. They're not going to want to, d like, double down on another murder. <laughs> They've got a chore yeah. already. He's, so he's got his hands full. Yeah. And not only that, he's going to be like, you know what? I came out here to hide my first murder, but I got the itch. What's the <laughs> easiest way to get it? Uh, Jumping on a moving car. Let's see. There's the highway, and people like to really tear ass around here because there's no cops and no street lights and shit. So, yeah, maybe I'll just uh, wave somebody down. <laughs> sure. No, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't convince her otherwise. He pulls up his, 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 his pant leg and is like, yoo -hoo. <laughs> Yeah, I said, you know, I said, and trust me, if someone does come down the pipe and I, I allude, somebody is in the road and they're asking me to stop. I said, I promise you now, not going to happen. <laughs> I will stop. <laughs> I promise you that I will stop for them. <laughs> yeah. Above all else, even if the even if the uh, the odds are against it, and it's a million to one. It's, it's a murderer out there with a winning lottery ticket in his pocket with my name on it. But he's going to murder me before I can Why get does it. His pocket have your name on it. It's it rubbed off from the ticket. Oh, okay. And the, even if all that happens, I won't stop. <laughs> well, that's like I'm looking at lists of camping gear, and it's like lists of camping gear, and it's like defense. Like I don't, I got a hatchet. <sighs> okay, here's the thing, Andy. Don't fall into this trap. Don't say, I got a blank. If you've not trained with that thing, it might as well be nothing. I know how to throw a hatchet. Don't throw anything. If no, somebody's no. coming at you, don't give up your weapon. I need you to start, like, watch our... Can I throw my dog? Throw your dog. That that might be a nice distraction, but don't give up your weapon. Someone, you know, don't say, I got a hatchet. Say, I got a hatchet. And I've been doing the basic 10 strikes that I learned hatchet drills. Yeah. Learn how to swing that thing. Cause if you say, I got a hatchet, someone's going to be like, Hey, I'm in your camp now. And I want to fuck you up. If you say, I got a hatchet, they're going to say, great. I got a fucking death wish, bitch. And they're going to stab <laughs> I, you. I got the movie death wish. <laughs> yeah. He says, I got a copy of the movie death wish. And he breaks it in half and slits your throat with it. God. Anything's possible. What I want you to do is train. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds yeah, paranoid. Get your, get, no, 
I'm not saying to defend yourself against a, a murderer with a hatchet, but don't don't make that excuse. But also train because it's good for X exercise and stuff. Yeah, you get that you get that cardio in, and also you get the the David's X strikes that he loves to do. Yeah, you do your ten basic strikes. It's very. This, this is all online. If you haven't seen David self defend himself. You yeah, should. it's not hard. So so that's the thing. When you get a hatchet in your hand, you know, hey, I've swung a stick 10 times in all those 10 ways. This is a stick with a blade on it. <gasps> and all you got to do is wave it at most people, and that'll make them fuck off. Like, you know, I how determined I am to break into somebody's campsite and steal their s'mores or whatever meager valuables they have brought out. Not my s'mores. <laughs> to, to, the, uh, to, the, to the forest. You know, someone's swinging an axe on my face. I'm like, hey, dude, I'm rethinking this. Hey. I'm going <laughs> to give up this life of crime, at least at this campsite, locally. That's <laughs> neither here nor there, David. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> I know. <laughs> speaking of crazy people, it's yeah. been a long time. Mm-hmm. But I have a local Craigslist ad. Yeah, behind the scenes, I heard we had one. So let's. Uh, do we have any uh, intro music, Krista? Sure. Let's do it. You have marvelous hands. Ah. It's a classic. It says new. Oh, don't talk to me! Uh, technically, <laughs> it was new at some point. Why are you trying to kill my soul? Yeah, because I made two of them. This was the newer version of the Goosebumps one, but then Mel McMurrin made us the Calypso one. And I don't know where that one is. Anywho, Andy, Anywho. what do you have for us for this week's Creepin' on Craigslist? Uh, posted three days ago in Reno. Mm. It says, I have a very odd thing I'm after, but I'm serious. Totally. That, I love how... <laughs> that, because the internet has made it so everybody has to be <laughs> extremely clear about the seriousness of their bid. Makes everything that much more hilarious. Yeah. To me. For the longest time, I have been obsessed with pigs, hogs... Slop. Mm. Oh, I got a coworker, ex coworker, I can introduce you to. <laughs> <laughs> Being on a farm and so forth. Uh, sure. Well, yeah, that's where most pigs. We all, hang we out. all have that farm dream where we're going to get out there on our big tractor and raise the corn. There are some jobs I feel like I would want to take a week uh, off to take a crack at. Farmer is one. Like maybe rancher, not farmer, like rancher with little animal farm. Uh, bus driver is another one, but continue. I digress. <laughs> Ever since I saw this one show, where the show where the where the show you how and what the the feed hogs on a large farm. So you watched a documentary on farming or sure. hogs. feeding feeding pigs or feeding pig. Uh, yeah, I, YouTube is a wonderful place. I mean, you could find anything anything you want really. So I I believe the ads. Yeah, I, what I'm saying is this ad is legitimate so far. You can find any any if you have any problem, you can get on there and some British kid will be like, come down. Yeah, or a very old man who wants to tell you, oh, my God. I, no, I don't want to digress anymore, but I have a story for later. Okay. It says, I myself have been desperate mm. to try it, to live it. But what, raising a pig or to feeding a pig? It. What I'm looking for is someone who would be willing to put me in a filthy hog pen and feed me oh, that no. exact same oh, kind of no. hot, ripe, rotten, spoiled, slop goodness right out of a trough. Oh. Why? Why? He, Andy, Why not want to be a farmer and raise a pig? Um, here's here's my question, Andy. We've done so many of these. I have no <laughs> hypotheses as to why this happens. Why do people want to be and or fuck animals? Do you have any? You watched the documentary, dude. I know, and I still have no idea. I never see or understand motivation. All I get is, oh, I like fur, or I really having. fur. Like suck horse, to, what the f- I don't, yeah. th- I don't ever get it. I don't. It, there's no one ever is like, well, the reason is. Well, th- this person sounds like they really wanted to be on Double Dare when they were a kid and just never got the well the chance. That's ridiculous. I think what the real reason is is they're so you know they've been so disenfranchised by the human race they have to connect with animals, <laughs> but no one wants to admit that they're fucked up in the head. We all have to be like, oh well. You know, furries are a totally acceptable thing, but if you're so far removed from humanity that you want to be an animal, that's fucked. That is 100% legitimately, objectively fucked. Yes. That You heard it here first, Andy. I, 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 will I never... don't think this is the first time I've heard it. No, that's why I'm saying I will never waver. And that's why I will, until the day I die, until someone admits to me 
that it is because they are fucked and they are no longer uh, whatever. They're disconnected from the human race because of parental issues or social awkwardness or whatever. I need someone to admit that to me. That one road dogs cartoon. Yeah. Or whatever. Like I'm sure a lot of people got started down that path by, you know, whatever, uh, some sexy cartoon character from an old Warner brothers cartoon. (laughs) You know, Uh, like when Bugs Bunny dressed up like a girl. Yeah. I was about to say famously Garth uh, from Wayne's world, you know, our classic touchstone of when Bugs Bunny would dress up like a girl. Um. (laughs) I want you to let me enjoy what it is, what it is like to be a big fat dirt hog myself. Oh my god! I'm Why? very what? serious. I I want to. I I know this will never happen, but I want to get my hands on someone like this and interview them. I'll say I'll never say your name. I'll never mention where you live, but I need to know why you want to do this. Be honest with me, fucker. Why do you want to take your clothes off, roll around in shit, and eat rotten garbage? God, what if, wouldn't it be a fucking trip? This guy's just sitting there. He's like, I, you know, I'm interested in pig farms. And he starts watching a YouTube video and all of a sudden he gets a boner. He's like, oh no. Like, don't get me wrong. I understand the concept of a YouTube wormhole paradigm shift. You can, I started watching, you know, reviews for Kali sticks ended up on this thing. That's like a car whip and somehow ended up in a knife sharpening loophole that ended up somewhere completely different and wanted to try each of those hobbies. But then when I snapped out of it and got back to reality, I was like, Oh yeah, uh, no, no, but Um, But this guy didn't. I have been obsessing and dreaming of this for so long. I truly hope I can find it. We can talk in oh. private over all the details of this. That's the whole ad. So you want to be a dirty, so filthy you, piggy. Do you need, then, is he asking for a farm owner? I think he's. Or? I think he's looking for somebody who already has pigs to remove the pigs from well, the pen. Okay. And let him in this, to roll around and then slap him right. up, man. This, this is a huge ask. Is, is what I'm getting at. Like all of these things are un like I, I, what are our touchstones personally on this show? Remember the woman who wanted her ass fed with a whole bunch of food and booze. Yes. So uh, the thing was like, she wanted you the viewer of the ad to foot the bill for all the shit going in her ass. Mm. And this is a similar situation. You, you know, it's a simple request. Please, sir, let me get nude and roll around in pig shit and eat garbage on your land. But you don't realize the behind the scenes work that that will entail. Yeah. So what the fuck? That Another thing. It, it's like you're, you're gross and self-entitled. Fuck you twice, you weirdo. Yeah. And he lives in this city somewhere in this city. There's oh, someone just yeah. waiting up by their computer like, I hope I get one today. There Do you are- have a lot of farms in Reno? Uh, there's plenty of farms like around. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like around here. It's relatively rural. Like we've got cows and pigs within a stone's throw of where we live. Like you don't have to live anywhere specific to be near a farm. But that's I. I why doesn't anyone say I? Because if you're going to go and admit all of these weird things you want to do in the Craigslist ad, and people will you know, overflow with, with detail and justification, but they always leave out the motivation. I don't understand it. And I want to know. Dave, Dave needs to know why you're doing it. Then he will, then he will give you your request. He'll, he'll pack your butt full. So full of nice hot dogs and whipped cream. Yeah, whatever. Like I, if, if you'll be, that's, and maybe the true, my true crime thing has exacerbated this too, because I, I want in, in either scenario, you want closure. You want the why. You got the who. You got the how. You got the when. You got the what. But the why always is missing. Mm-hmm. Why do you want to be a pig? Why do you want to dress up like an animal and fuck an Arctic fox or a unicorn? Why do you want me to buy all the food to shove in your ass? Why, why, why? Why did you murder your family? Why did you have a murder cabin? Why were you a traveling murderer? Why were you a cannibal? All of the things... And after even an overwhelming evidence or in low stakes situations, nobody answers. It's true. Except Ed Kemper. I'll always say Ed Kemper is the exception that breaks all the rules because mm-hmm. he did all the weird shit and then was totally upfront about it. Yeah, of but course. The, yeah. The only, thinking man's murderer or weird shit guy. 
Well, no, he's not the thinking man, but he's like, since he was and is, because he's still alive, since he is so crazy intelligent, like he has to come to grips with who he is logistically, but still has to grapple with what he did emotionally. But no one else is going to be forthcoming like that. And it's so weird. I just, my simple question is why? Why are you doing this? It's not your business to know. It's your business to shove my butt full of cookies. Uh, well, I think that, that if I'm probably dead, yeah, probably, uh, yeah. Well, they're having, in... they, they, like the lady wanted like mixed drinks poured into her butthole. She's dead from alcohol poisoning. Yeah, and also like whatever her her whole thing. But she she was a very special object because she posted like two or three times, if I remember correctly. And her grammar, punctuation, and, you know, grasp of the English language deteriorated each time, if I'm remembering. Yes. Yeah. So, I don't know. Whatever. That That's my thing. I, I'm part of the human condition, too. And I want to know why people do things. Because I know why I do things. And I know why I don't tell people why I do things. Because either I'm embarrassed or I never thought about it. And if you never thought about it, think about it, dipshit, and get back to me. And if you're embarrassed, why the fuck are you doing it? Yeah. So great creeping on Craigslist, Andy. Yeah, that yeah. Was good. That's a weird and, and and had all the classic flavor too. And it started off so innocuous. Uh, yeah, because I, I was like, oh, he wants to be a pig farmer. Cause no don't get me wrong, I've been in a situation where I've wanted to post similar ads or make similar gestures where like, hey, let me watch you do a thing you're good at for a while. Like I want to hang around somebody who works at a museum. I want to hang around a blacksmith for a little bit, not necessarily get in their way or whatever, but just like sort of take it in. Yeah, of course. I've never wanted to go and be like, Hey, now that I'm at the museum, let me get into a dinosaur costume and get into the uh, display and jack off or whatever. I don't want to be. I was going to say right right up to the jacking off point. I was like, that's just David's dream. (laughs) Put me in the dinosaur (laughs) costume. I don't want to be in any of that shit. I don't want to be a pig. I don't want to be a dinosaur. I want to be a human experiencing these fucking things. I don't want to cut my human experience short to be a fucking animal. Ugh. (sighs) Mm. Uh, So what else is in the news? (laughs) That's it. That's all I got, David. Nothing happens oh. to me anymore because I'm always here. Well, yeah. Oh, you know, c- coming up, this is this show that you're listening to now. This podcast is going to drop after the live show, so I don't mind spoiling. Watched uh, the Color Out of Space recently. The Lovecraft adaptation, the uh, Richard Stanley Lovecraft, uh, yeah. Nicholas Cage led mm-hmm. thing. He, he certainly does some movies, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Oh, what a fucking dog's breakfast this is. <laughs> It is just the most, it's everything I find disgusting about Lovecraft fan fiction and adaptation all rolled into one disgusting package. So you liked it then? And here's the thing. I want and do have a burning hatred for it, but every time it reaches a zenith where I can't take it and it has the potential to go critical mass, Nicholas Cage comes in and does something crazy. And I'm like, it's kind of like sleight of hand. He's the, 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 the rapid hand movements that makes me look away from the part of the magic trick. I'm not supposed to see. <laughs> and it works just long enough where, okay. At the end, because it becomes kind of a slog, but I think for the most part, Nicolas Cage is used well because every time it gets sort of dull, it's like, uh oh, Nick Cage. He's making that face he's again. He's gotta go crazy again. Yeah, and he does. And it's it's totally fine in that regard. I think his performance is fine because I expected him to be a bad actor. I give no allowance for anyone else because they're all fucking terrible. So everyone to a man. Nicolas Cage I expected, but everyone else sucks. Yeah, it was well, they they spent all their money on the cage master. Yeah, the beginning. I was I looked at David at one point because two people were having a conversation, and I looked at him and I was like, "This is great acting." Like I it was. was here's, here's the thing. I was so ready for like when the characters show up and they suck. I was like, "Fine," because they're expendable. Like you don't want Jason's murder victims to be really deep. True. Because over the course of yada, yada, yada. But they forced me 
into these awful characters. 40 minutes of Nothing but cliche. And I remember the point I said, fuck you, movie, and checked out. Mm -hmm. The exact point? I remember the exact point. Because it's so, just like every other Lovecraft fanboy who does their own thing, it's so heavily laden with Lovecraft references. Of course. And at, at one point... Uh, Nicholas Cage is in the barn and they raise alpacas for some reason. For alpaca milk, you know, the most nutritious milk. He does yeah, milk, milk alpacas, alpaca. Andy. You nailed it on the fucking head. Is that the point you so, checked out? No, 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 no. The point I checked out was uh, Nicholas Cage is like reading a book on the porch. He goes out to the thing and classic jump scare. There's a flashlight. He turns around like, ah, and you see the book he's holding up and it's the willows. And for those of you in the know, you go, but I'm going to unpack it for you. Okay, good. So The Willows is written by Algernon Blackwood. Algernon Blackwood is one of Lovecraft's imperial columns that held him up. Uh, Blackwood, Poe, Dunsany, yada, yada. He's one of the big four or five. So the fact that Nicolas Cage spun around and held up a copy of The Willows, at this point, a story that's 200 fucking years old. Yeah. I went, fuck you, movie, because at that point, we are I already accepted the fact that they had stolen a character name from the Dunwich Horror and just thrown it in here like, I'm not going to fucking notice. <laughs> I said, fine. You want to call her Lavinia? Knock yourself the fuck out. I get you want to make as many Lovecraft nods as it was. And so they made a lot. I was willing to take a lot, but the critical mass, and I was hoping to go the whole movie, the critical mass, the tipping point that made me go fuck you and check out was like 10 minutes in. Oh, no. And then was David that, still had before? like five hours left of the movie. It was pretty long, I feel. It was it did feel very long. I don't know if it was exceptionally long. Was the Willows book um, reveal before or after the Necronomicon book reveal? Uh, oh, we had the Necronomicon too. Oh, they uh, had everything. They yeah. named every city. It was before. So, so yeah, they, they, you hear on the news, he goes, oh, the weather tonight in greater Arkham area, Kingsbury, Innsmouth, <laughs> like Dunsmith, Dunwich, literally hitting the entire Lovecraft ecosystem. He just reads like, the whole thing. Holy fuck. It, it was like everything. Now, lo, you know, one of my things about him is like, he gives away every story at the beginning. He says, here's what happened. Everybody's dead. Now let me unpack that. <laughs> this was a an, an adaptation that took away every ounce of finesse, every ounce of elegance, every monicum of like wit, and was just like, oh, oh, aliens in the water! It's purple! It's purple! <laughs> no, it's actually a color they had never seen before. Bullshit! Which was fuchsia. Which is purple. It, fuck, <laughs> in my head, the color out of space is like a drop of oil on water it's a constantly shifting sort of multi-chromatic weird thing but that's just me i would not nail it down to a single hue of fucking purple uh, whatever <laughs> but david you're, you're acting you seem surprised that nicholas cage is uh, he's at the end of his life i think and he just wants to get money no that's that's the only thing I'm not surprised about. The only thing that doesn't surprise me and the only thing that saved it for me was Nicolas Cage's being there. Like the fact that he was there and really meant something. he did. I didn't mean shit, but the fact that he did everything counterintuitive to what a normal human being would do saved it. And I feel bad for Mark because as of this recording, he has yet for me to unload on him because he in passing said, I really like the movie, and my oh, gonna, oh don't ever I tell almost, David you like something. He'll make he'll make a passive aggressive Facebook post about the Avengers. <laughs> no, the the fact that he was like, uh, well, whatever. He he's a, a horror fan um, of cheese beyond a Lovecraft fan, and I am the reverse, so I get where he's coming from. But I feel bad because he's gonna be like, yeah, it was okay, and I'm like, but in the book, <laughs> hey, they didn't follow so this old bad. old <laughs> book. To the letter. No, I'm fine with making concessions. Uh, I'm not fine with having idiotic characters. 
Hmm. That's my, I, I will make concessions in story because you have to appeal to a modern audience. I will not make concessions in human intelligence where the characters are concerned. Like if you're so dumb, like anybody would be shouting at the screen. Like, why are you doing that? Come That's on. That's when I have a problem. Of course. So t- tune in in the past to hear David yell at yes. Mark. Yeah. I, I just think that Richard Stanley is a bad I, I here's my hypothesis. Richard Stanley. Is that the the reanimator guy? Doctor No, that's um shit. That's fuck. Richard Stanley, South African filmmaker. Yeah, Richard Stanley is South African filmmaker. Stuart Gordon is reanimator. Richard Stanley was going to do the Val Kilmer Marlon Brando Island of Dr. Moreau, but was crazy and got kicked off, and now I see why. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I always thought that like if if Stanley got to do the Island of Dr. Moreau the way he wanted and get because he was so passionate about the project I thought this is the man for the job so when he said he was a Lovecraft fan and that he wanted to do justice to the material I believed him foolishly uh and now and then watching it and all of his characters are like Ha ha, uh, you're so funny. I love weed. Do you love weed? <laughs> this guy loves weed. And I'm a witch. And like, like Tommy t- Chong's in it. Yeah, Tommy like, Chong's in it. Tommy, yeah. yes. Lovely. It's, in, it's insane. It's, he did pretty good, though. Yeah. Like, he I did don't know right. the actor is. I think he did better I than I think that's Cage. why I forgot about him, because he's like the best fucking part. Yeah. Hey, man. He's in it just enough. Yeah, he he's... He's there to be the spooky expositive guy, and he does it really good. Mm-hmm. I the 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 why is insane. Why the mm-hmm. the real the real? I don't want to spoil it if you're going to be listening in the past or the future. <laughs> but the real the real was confusing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Andy, why don't we just go ahead and do this? Why don't we start wrapping up the <sighs> show? Uh, and we'll do that, obviously, with a round of staff recommendations. Obviously. So what would you like to recommend our listeners? Uh, my wife and I have been playing a game on Steam called Moving Out. Okay. Uh, have you ever played Overcooked? Yeah. Yeah. It is very similar to Overcooked, but you are movers, and you have to like get everything out of this house and into your truck within a certain time limit. All right. The, yeah, the, the Overcooked model, like the gameplay mechanics, is really fun. Uh, the, the biggest complaint people have about it is that... Uh, it's only local co-op. There's no online. So if you're going to buy this, buy it if you have somebody to play with. Yeah, that, which is fine. Like, I, I I, long for the days of local co-op. But if, if you want to yell at your wife, pivot like you were in fucking Friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. a lot of, a lot of uh, <laughs> arguments get started. Yeah, we played Overcooked and... I always got yelled at. Or I think Trung played with us, too, yeah. when he was here, and he got yelled at more than me. Well, that's because Trung is... A tri- I imagine Trung takes an entire cooked dish and throws it in the trash and then just looks over at David. <laughs> it seems so bizarre to me, because the, 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 the test asked to be performed don't seem very difficult, yet I'm surrounded by people who are either refusing to learn how to do them competently or are simply below handing a plate of fish and chips <laughs> to another player. <laughs> I don't know. This is below me. So moving out is the name of the game? Moving out. It's good. All right. Uh, Krista, do you want to recommend anything to our listeners? I don't know if I've recommended it before, but thanks to PJ, I'm into auto chess. Oh, yeah. It's come up. On my phone. Yeah. All right. Automatic well, chess. Again. It's fun. Yeah, I there's some Steam games that I've been poking around in, but I haven't got I, I haven't pulled the plug on yet because I got other irons in the fire. Uh, so I guess this week I don't really have anything to recommend aside from a tentative future possible recommendation for that new Ninja Turtle thing coming out. But my uh, expectations are still just a a beefier version of Hyperstone Heister Turtles in Time. I don't think it's going to be the the game breaking, mind blowing fighting mechanic that they are advertising. Well, of course, no. Like every, every time they're like, oh, it's, "It's gonna be the best beat 'em up ever." I'm like, "Sure, it's gonna be a beat 'em up," but I, I, you know, I'll enjoy it. You don't have to lie to me, though. There, I there are things though that are undefinable to me that make a good beat 'em up. So, l- slight diversion. Hyperstone Heist, the aforementioned, is a fine, serviceable, even great beat 'em up. 
if you get your hands on a copy of Venom Separation Anxiety, where you can play as Venom or Spider-Man yeah. for the SNES, that game is incredibly dull. Same with a. Uh, I used to play Maximum Carnage, which is the same. They use the same sprites and everything. It's just kind of. And, eh. and what about it is so boring that. And I don't know, is it the angle that you're viewing it? Because it's slightly askew? Is it that something passes in front of the camera? Like, it's all the same one button mashing thing, but maybe there's a missing flare piece. I don't know. Maybe it's the, the sound effects, the visceral feel of the hits. It's it's indefinable to me. Yeah. But Turtles in Time and the Hyper, Hyper Sun Heist have it, whereas Venom doesn't. Like, Final Fight has it. Final Fight? Uh, I like Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage also. But sometimes the, like I'm like, oh, check out this new beat-em-up, and I'll play it for a few minutes, and I'm like, eh. Yeah, there's something... and Because, like, Mother Russia Bleeds, I think, pulls it off almost perfectly. It's pretty good. Like, it, the, the hits are really impactful. Like, they're nice and powerful. The sound effects are good. Like, the move variety is there. So maybe it's a multifaceted thing. Like, But if one one of those facets is dirty, it reflects through the whole gem and fucks it up. Mm-hmm. Just just like in Wishmaster. Just like in Wishmaster. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, uh, if you haven't yet, you should be in our Discord. Yeah. If you want to be in our Facebook, you should also do that. So blah, blah, blah. Go by the uh, website, which I mentioned at the beginning of the show. All the links are there if you want to get to whatever our social media is. So, unless you have anything else to bring up right before we go out, I'm ready to shut this baby down. I'm good. All right. So, until the very next week, I am Dave. I'm Krista. I'm Andrew. Saying, uh, guys, pick up your stick and train. Don't say, I got a hatchet. <laughs> See you next week. Love <laughs> <laughs> Fistful of Podcasts Radio.